Welcome back to the IFBB Pro Ask Me Anything podcast. This is a show where elite performance and bro science meets evidence-based strategy. I'm your host today, Dr. Dwayne Jackson, and for today, we are spotlighting a compound that's creating buzz in the metabolic sciences as well as in the fitness industry, especially those who are interested in fat burning and uh, aerobic performance. This compound is SLUPP332, affectionately known in the industry as SLUP. Now imagine tapping into the benefits of endurance training, like heavy endurance training, and getting all those, you know, uh, benefits that we see with that with greater fat burn, better glucose control, enhanced stamina, all these things without having a treadmill or a pair of running shoes on whatsoever. Well, in rodent models, that's exactly what this compound appears to do. So stick with me today as I unpack the mechanisms, the data, and the big questions that surround this small molecule. Before we dive deeper, a necessary word of caution, SLUPP332 is not approved for human use. In fact, there are no clinical trials or even human studies that exist. I'm not a licensed physician, and this episode is for informational purposes only. So if you're considering any research compound, talk to a qualified medical provider before you embark on that journey. With that context in place, let's rewind and look at how this molecule came to be SLUPP332. Well, it was developed at St. Louis University, and its name really gives that away, the whole SLU thing. It's not a peptide molecule. It's a synthetic small molecule compound that's been specifically designed as a pan-estrogen-related receptor, or ERR agonist. And it targets the ERR alpha, beta, and gamma isoforms. These are key nuclear receptors that control mitochondrial gene expression and fat oxidation. So you can think of it as like flipping a switch um, or flipping the same genetic switches, like I should say, um, that get triggered during endurance training. Compounds like Sloop are selective ERR agonists, specifically ERR gamma. And they're used to experimentally mimic the metabolic effects of exercise, such as increased fat oxidation, increased mitochondrial biogenesis, and decreased fat mass in obesity models. Now, the real twist with these things is that there's no hormonal activation. This is not going to create you know, high estrogen levels in the body or cause estrogenic effects. This is just raw metabolic programming that's targeted. But understanding molecular targets is only the first step. You see, Sloop being a selective ERR gamma agonist, it interacts with cellular pathways to improve mitochondrial function, oxidative metabolism, and energy homeostasis. Here are some of those uh, reported mechanisms of action of this small molecule. So, First off, it activates the uh, estrogen-related receptor gamma, ERR gamma, mentioned this earlier. Uh, so it selectively binds and activates ERR gamma, which is an orphan nuclear receptor that regulates genes involved in mitochondrial biogenesis, fatty acid oxidation, and oxidative phosphorylation. Secondly, it enhances the PGC1-alpha ERR gamma signaling axis. And ERR gamma works synergistically with PGC1-alpha, which is a master regulator of mitochondrial gene expression. Now, this axis drives transcription of nuclear-encoded mitochondrial genes. Thirdly, it upregulates oxidative metabolism genes. So SLUP332 uh, upregulates genes related to mitochondrial electro uh, electron transport chain, also fatty acid transport and beta oxidation, and even the tricarboxylic acid cycle where you can spit some ATPs out that we normally turn on when we're doing aerobic exercise. Uh, it also upregulates genes that um, drive mitochondrial biogenesis or the creation of more mitochondria so that we can get a lot more mitochondrial density within those skeletal muscles, which then increase performance and all kinds of metabolic effects. Fourth, uh, SLUP332 is reported to increase fatty acid oxidation and mitochondrial efficiency, which promotes a metabolic shift toward fat utilization. 
And it improves our mitochondrial reserve, which supports energy production under stressful conditions. So stress can have an effect of um, down-regulating mitochondrial responses. We see this in obesity and all kinds of dietary stress, but even uh, from a, um, a psychological and exercise stress point of view, um, this stuff it seems to at least improve mitochondrial reserve that can support energy production when we're, you know, overtraining, which would then say that, you know, it kind of stops you or at least helps you from overtraining despite being in very, very heavy training periods. Fifthly, uh, Sloop 332 and analogs like this promote thermogenesis in brown adipose tissue or fat. This increases the expression of UCP1, an uncoupling protein, and other thermogenic genes, which enhance energy expenditure and reduce fat mass. And finally, it improves glucose and insulin handling. At least we know this from obese rodent models. This is likely due to, uh, likely a secondary effect anyway, due to the improved mitochondrial function we see with this stuff and the reduced ectopic fat deposition that has been shown in rodent models. Now, ectopic fat is that highly inflammatory fat that surrounds the viscera. Um, so we see that visceral fat down here, as well as a bunch of organs within there, the liver, the heart, and the guts. And these are this fat is not the same as subcutaneous fat. This is the fat that drives metabolic disease and organ failure in a lot of cases. So this is a really promising effect of this uh, really cool compound. So when we boil out all the scientific jargon, this means that Sloop 332 seems to, anyway, increase mitochondrial density and function, increase resting energy expenditure, increase fat oxidation, decrease fat mass without affecting food intake or activity, uh, preserve lean mass and metabolic flexibility despite being in a very high energy flux state. So cool stuff. But let's zoom in. How does this look when we take a little bit of a deeper look into actual muscle cells and the, uh, you know, the genetics around that? Well, past cell culture experiments using isolated muscle cells reported that Sloop dramatically boosted the expressions of uh, genes that are tied to fat metabolism and mitochondrial energy production. Now, in these experiments, mitochondrial density and mitochondrial respiration surged, matching pretty much what you'd expect from seeing uh, someone who's had intense aerobic conditioning. Now, essentially, these isolated muscle cells were training without training because there was no training stimulus applied to them. That's pretty promising, even if it's in a Petri dish, but really what does this translate to in whole organisms? For humans, there are currently no studies, but SLU PP332 is most commonly taken orally by those willing to do the research on themselves. However, injectable versions are actually becoming a lot more available now and they're increasing in popularity, popularity due mostly uh, to make it you know, more resemble what's been done in the animal studies. And for obvious reasons, increases in bioavailability because we don't have to deal with first pass metabolism. Okay, so this leads to a big question. How might this theoretically translate into human use? And what are people actually doing with it that are willing to do some experiments on themselves? 